Today's podcast is sponsored by Manscaped. Check out their ultra premium collection. It's a cleaning routine for more than just your balls. The kit has you fully covered head to toe. And when you feel clean, you feel confident like me, the baddest man around. The ultra premium collection includes Manscaped's deodorant for your armpits. It also includes a hydrating body spray if you have tattoos or dry skin. There's body wash and it's a two-in-one shampoo as well. All products are cruelty, paraben, and dye-free. Clean yourself off after a hard workout like I do with an ultra-premium collection. You'll be smelling great all day long. Also, don't forget the flagship Manscaped Long Mower 4.0. Get 20% off plus free shipping with the code HOTBOXING at manscaped.com. Again, that's 20% off free shipping with the code HOTBOXING at manscaped.com. Being a badass now comes in the bottle thanks to Manscaped. Yes, sir. This is, I don't know if it's corny, but, you know, linking up with Obama would be, like, one of my final cool things. I never, yeah. like, met him. That'd be awesome. Yeah, and then, but I don't want to meet him, like cordially like the corny way everybody meet him. I want him like he's in my DJ booth, we turning up, bitches everywhere, like I don't like, believe that's gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, this is Mike Tyson and we have another episode of Hot Boxing. This is my co-host Adam Wilkes and we got our man who kid as a guest. Fuck yeah. I'm so you know happy to see you smoking, man. I know, man. Listen, you know oh, you know that nigga Gully? Come on, man. You know half the nigga from Philadelphia? Yeah, he smokes like nonstop, huh? Oh, really? He don't smoke or he doesn't? Well, he smoke? thought we had a contest and I fucking slaughtered him. <laughs> <laughs> really? I slaughtered him. <laughs> I've been smoking a lot lately because my, my, I just realized like when you live in Jersey, it's like child support still goes on. Like, when is this shit gonna end? My son is 21, yo. How'd you end up in Jersey? What? You said, how did I get to Jersey? Yeah, how'd your son end up in Jersey? Because you grew up in Queens, right? No, I grew up, yeah, I was born in Brooklyn. And then, of course, where he's like his yeah. area, Flatbush, Erasmus. Um, I don't know if he's from the area. Are you American? Uh, yeah, I was born here. You know, Haitians, yeah. uh, they 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 cheat. They they have the baby here physically. Like my parents, they in, they, they intercourse and then the juices came out. I came out in Brooklyn, 1971, and then literally like once you're born, they send you to Haiti. Really? And then the grand my grandmother took care of me, so I didn't see my father and mother so for they five sent you years. From Haiti, as soon as you were born here. Yeah, as soon as you're born. They, that was some fucking primitive shit, man. Yeah, it's like I don't know what the fuck going on. Like, so it's like you know, you think your grandmother and your aunts is like your parents, but it's it's. Were you traumatized, nigga? Nah, I was naked running around in summer rain in Haiti. Traumatized, right? Nah, I was I was not I was I wasn't really that. Speak French. I speak a little French. You know? So what are you doing now? I'm just fucking bad bitches now. Like, I'm Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> bad bitches, bitches. No, right now, you know what I do. I still run radio. I've been running uh, Eminem's channel. That's your best friend, by the way. I interviewed him. It's all love. So I interviewed him, Dre. Um, uh, who else I interviewed? Uh, Snoop Dogg. But you grew up in an era with like Run Who's DMC, LL Cool J, yeah, Nas. Yeah. Um, Who's your friend? Well, you know, uh, Mike, you know, I, I think I told you this before, but... I lived on Springfield 111. So to the right is Hollis. Up north is Linden. To the left is like Springfield. And I guess Jamaica Avenue is to the so it's like Run DMC. Everybody was was to the right. I lived on Tall Stretch. I don't know if you remember him, Live Squad. So Tupac used to be on my block all the time. But that's before Tupac was uh that's before he was like the gangster Tupac. He was with Digital Underground. So he was like hippie, he was dressed like a hippie and stuff like that. So he would get beats from Tall Stretch. A couple blocks ahead, L Cool J, when he was like skinny and shit, Linden Boulevard. To the left was Steve Stout, a lot of executives, you know. Um, and then you, you would see Red DMC like here and there driving them old schools and shit. But the main thing is is the fact that Tupac would go up up and down my block to get Chinese food and, a, and, 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 and like a 40 ounce of OE with Tall Stretch, like, almost every day. It was like, you know, O.E. was like some fucking traditional shit. I don't know if you ever drink that shit. Drink you used to drink O.E., right? When you, before you fuck a nigga up. Like, that shit is like, it, it was, was like tradition. It was called the O.D. crew. Yeah. I, I mean, gold crew. 
But this one time my dad punched me in the head. I don't know what I did. And that's the only interaction I had with Tupac. He came to the backyard because when, when Haitians beat you, they make you kneel. Like you have to kneel for like hours. Like You think they're fucking Roman emperors or something? I don't know. It's some fucked up shit Haitians do, man. Like he made me kneel in the sun. And that's that I, desoline shit. Ugh, it's, just, it's so fucking, I don't know, man. And then Tupac came up to the gate was like, damn, he fucked you up, man. <laughs> <laughs> and that was it. That, 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 that was it. That's the only connection I got. Never met Biggie, but I know everybody in the street, from Jay-Z to everybody. I know every single person in hip-hop, but that's it. Tupac saw me get punched by my Haitian dad, and I never met Biggie. Not once. Mike, you had a relationship with Tupac, right? Yeah, I knew him and Biggie. I didn't know Biggie as well as I knew Tupac, though. Yeah, you and Tupac, man. Like, he came to your fights. He came to see me when I was in prison. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. I remember you saying, Tupac, dead or, I asked you if dead or alive, if there was anybody in the world you could smoke with, you said Tupac. Because you took a break from smoking, I think it was late 80s, yeah. early 90s, uh, for your boxing career. And that was one guy I you wish you smoked with. He was always trying to get me to smoke and win the smoke. <laughs> How was weed back then? It wasn't like the way it is no, now. No, not like, like now, but it was still good. Was it? I thought yeah. the book was, was shit. No, nah, it was in LA. Oh, so you had the real shit from like, yeah. uh, what is it like? The uh, best uh, weed in the world is Seattle and shit like that. Where, Los Angeles? Yeah, California, period. But it's evolved. I mean, over the last couple of decades, it's really come. I mean, you see the Tyson 2.0 stuff, right? So how did they put these together? Like, you had, like, a college kid, like, scientists, like, specialists? Yeah, niggas. No, we got a few cultivation facilities, a few sites uh, across the state right now. We're in 18 states, This is what we go through. Across the country. We go through this in a couple of days. Oh, my God. That's in a couple of days. That's in a couple of days. Really? Give it a smoke. Give it a smoke, man. Oh, this is better. Yo, I never did cocaine. That's just a couple of days, dude. Oh my god. That's nothing. Oh my god, this, this is the best, dude. You're like a nigga Escobar now. Like, I don't know. Like, this is crazy. You gotta have a plane on top of the building next time I come here. Put That's Tyson a great possibility. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it's just getting started, right, Mike? I think it's crazy that he's been through so much. He's I think he's done amazing. I think you're the first, like, I guess, sports star that was seen worldwide, but now you're like selling weed. Did you ever think that one day you'd be fucking like one of the top like weed poppers out here? Like I had never, never in a million years thought this would happen. But, <laughs> but, but I did one thing. I took the responsibility of taking the role of the face of this stuff. Mm. That's a, this is amazing, man. You know what's a big part of the authenticity? Mike tests all the products. You know, we're only the best of the best goes in the jar. They if Mike's know, not going to smoke it, it's no, not going to happen. They have no idea really? what we have to come. We have some mind-blowing strategies to come. Did you test it on, our, our, like, our fellow, like, weed heads, like, like Snoop, Wiz? Well, only on myself I need to know if it's good or not. Talking to the biggest weed head there is, man. What? Come on. <laughs> Damn. I didn't shut your man down. Your man Gully, you think, smoked so much. <laughs> what did he do? He was under the table? He, he slumped? No, he just walked away in embarrassment. <laughs> he tried to act like we won't talk about it or nothing. Like no. we, we gonna, we gonna talk. He thought we were talking, we forgot all about it. I said, nigga, you, you stopped smoking, what happened? What? <laughs> Wow, I love those guys though. They they their podcast is lit. Like, yeah, they be I mean, wilding I out. did this show, but that nigga couldn't smoke with the king, man. Nah, man. But you know what? You gotta bring like a couple of heavy hitters in here. Get Willie Nelson in here, man. Oh, that would be my dream. Yeah, get Willie Nelson in here. Let's I interviewed him a million he, times. He, you smoked him before? I interviewed him like oh, man, times on my show. Man, come on, please. I don't like to smoke with him. Uh, my eyes. Just the smoke, he doesn't have to say anything. One I think one I don't know what I was smoking with him. One eye went like that, like. Like it just my googly eye. Yeah. No, it, like it went. I was. I, I saw my brain. Like it went like in. Like I'm gonna bring the shit. best weed I have for him. You just put like crack on it or something. Oh, it's like, the best, uh, the highest. <laughs> Every time I fuck with Tyson, man, it's THC. always some wild shit, man. But it's all good. Yeah. <laughs> Only the best of the best. Right? Have we ever not had like a wild like? I think every interview we've had on my show. Is like a nightmare. You're like, an awesome guy though, man. Nah, publicist. I've seen publicists faint. I've seen, I mean, when your wife is there, I don't play no games. You know what I'm saying? No, my wife's like, my wife is cool. She's she like, chill. She yeah, I still don't play no games. She said hi, too. Yeah, tell her what's up. I love her. You know what I'm saying? Uh-oh. When you guys were at your 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 peak and, and 50, you had, you know, all this beef going on with all the hottest artists out there. Uh, how did that affect you, your career, and, and again, just 
did it block any opportunities for you? Um, it kind of like, I mean... It was the I, biggest beef of, you know, the, the I, late 90s, early 2000s, right? Yeah, I honestly didn't give a fuck because my loyalty was towards 50 because he was, he was actually the reason why I was known and popping. Um, it's unfortunate. I did everybody's mixtape before 50, like Nas and all those guys, and 50 was killing everybody, like, you know, how to rob. He dissed, like, damn near the whole industry. So physical beef with Terror Squad where I would avoid them, like, dodge them, you know. <laughs> Eventually I got kidnapped by Big Pun. I got, so I wanted to hear about that one. Yeah, that that's one of the, like your boy Freddie was telling me. Uh, you ended up in a trunk. Like he didn't yeah. fuck around. <laughs> Yo, Tyson, man, I never saw like this guy had like a Uzi. Like I don't even know that. I never, I never saw Uzi till I saw it with him. Like big you see, it, you see it on, you know, no, you see it on like movies with Arnold Schwarzenegger, but I didn't know they had that in Harlem. Like that's where they kidnapped me in front of Apollo. But listen, to let anybody know that's that crazy. doesn't know this about you, brother, who kid, who kid's not a regular nigga. Okay, express your, you know what I mean? Let them know your academic skills and all of that stuff. My, my man, like, I had to, I finally told Eminem yesterday how I leaked his song. How? Like, I, I, I stole that shit from the office. Like, and I, I had to, you know. Educate, yeah. yeah. So, all right, I'll give, you a, I'll give you a quick one-on-one. I've never, I think I told Eminem personally this, but I never told nobody how we used to do it. So this is how we used to do it. On some Ocean's Eleven shit, we'd be outside the studio, Five, four o'clock. So 4 a.m. in the morning. So we get information on who's in the studio. So Jay-Z, Memphis Bleak, the whole clique is in there. So we just like hang out to like 6, 7 till they come out. And when they come out, we go in. Usually the fucking engineer is getting like $7 an hour. He's a bum-ass nigga. Like he ain't getting no money. So we would give him like a G500. And they'll give me like all the sessions. They'll give me like, not like the song, but you hear like, Jay Z, yo, bring that back. Yo, fuck that. Take this out. Like everything is in this session because he'll record the whole shit. So then we come and take it. We cipher through those dats. Remember the, the dat machine, like that old school? I don't remember. Yeah, that you know, shit. shit, you were knocking niggas out. But we had this thing called <laughs> the dat machine. And they had like the dat, the dat really pans all the fucking audio. Like, if you do a song, it pans your voice and it pans your song but on the right. But you must have had beef from all that stuff. What? They were looking for me like crazy. They were like, how did this get out? So, and I learned that from DJ Clue because DJ Clue leaked One More Chance. So Biggie, the, the adrenaline rush of like, a guy like Biggie going on Hot 97 and talking about who's DJ Clue, I'm going to kill this motherfucker. Really? That, that shit just made us like, that what Biggie said? Yeah, he did that, bro. Every DJ dream was to be like Clue. Like he would have like all the exclusives, but this is what we were doing. Listen, like. I remember back when I was in my youth, somebody had said something about um, Big Daddy King, and then like 30 minutes later, he's talking on the radio, and they can, you know, you hear, hey, no, hey, what's up, bro, bro? Hey, stop, <laughs> hey, hey, hey. And King beat that fucking ass on the air. <laughs> Who was that? <coughs> can we look in, can we look and find out who the um I the heard daddy, that too Kane attack yeah. which, 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 <laughs> which, which DJ he attacked? Oh, he admitted? Big Daddy Kane talked about it? We heard him on the goddamn radio <laughs> beating the guy that. Mike, when was that? In the eighties. In the eighties? Hey no, put your chill Kane Bob Bob. <laughs> Isn't that the craziest shit in the world? 80s were crazy, man. Such a different time. I mean, Did you guys I, ever meet where, when you were, when Mike was in his the no, peak of no. your career, late 80s, early 90s? I saw him in a club in uh, in Phoenix one time. Yeah. And you were like, at your prime, and you were, like, I was horrified, yo. Like, everybody was scared. You were like, this club was sold out packed, and when you would walk through, everybody, you were like, the nigga Moses, like everybody was like moving, like you know, moving like the water, like it was crazy. Everybody was like, was not trying to fuck with that you. That was bro. a different time in yeah. life. A different time in life, bro. You look very menacing. I'm going, to, I'm going to Phoenix tomorrow, by the way. Are you going to Phoenix tomorrow? Yeah. I don't know if that club is still there, but everybody was horrified that day. But oh man, I think I bring love, but I come in there as love, man. There's no violence. They bro, you were like, like you like yo, you had you had like I think. Cut off sleeves, your arms. I don't know what the fuck was going on. You were like, and you were mad big though. Like your back was like, bro. You didn't look human at all. And I was a nobody. I'm glad I'm human now. No, you you're a teddy bear right now, man. I could put you like on my like carriage with my kid, I like push you out down in the park. 
Like, you're like a teddy bear. Like, this is mind-boggling, like, who he is today, man. Thank God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've seen you all over the world. Dubai, Germany. I've seen you, like, all over Europe, Italy. Randomly, you're, I came in this spot, and you're singing with, like, Pavarotti. Or so, like, you and some opera singers, like, fucking singing. I'm like, can you imagine, like, you're in Italy, and you don't know Mike Tyson's in this restaurant. You walk in there, you see Mike with a fucking opera singer, and they're both singing their ass off, and everybody's watching that shit. This is like a, a, a yeah. high-class restaurant. This is not like, I don't know, like IHOP or some shit. I get around sometimes. Like, <laughs> it, it's like Instagram was not even cracking at that time. Like, I filmed it. I got to find yeah, that shit. same Bart's. Yeah. I went to St. Bart's, and it was just... Um, it was just a shame that I was there. <laughs> it was just really um, interesting, nice place. I brought my family. We had a good time. My daughter celebrated her birthday mm -hmm. around four times. They had birthday parties, and um, it was just a good experience for them. I was glad they, they don't annoy there. you and your family. Like, everybody like they see you, and everybody's like, how, "How do you? How do you take care of that?" I don't know. It's just that um, some of these people we know, but we um, this is when the, the downtime. Mm. This is everybody's downtime. They're different here than when they're different in the, when they're in the city and in the office. They don't have no um, facades on there. It's who they are there. So how come nobody, there. people here don't get excited when Tyson walk in there? Oh, bro, 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 I would walk just, around Mike, everybody's everybody, what? one of the most uh, recognizable faces in the world. I'm right? like somewhat of a celebrity, but these are regular people here. Everybody's supposed to be like coming and fucking... Wet, like this is my on each other. This is my team. Shitting in each other's mouths. Yeah, this is a sick here, man. man. Hey, li <laughs> listen to what he said. What in people's <laughs> mouth? Guy got some um, diva. Like we're in Asia, man. Shit on each other. You know what I'm saying? That's what they do in Asia. They shit on each other. Yeah, you ever saw those fucking those videos? He looked like he watches this guy right here. In Asia, right? Right, Indian shit. So. Shitting on Asia, Asian two, shitting on each other. Two girls in one cup or some shit? What's that? Two shit? girls in one cup. Yeah. <laughs> Did they have it anyway? I don't know. I never shitted on a girl, but this it's supposed to be sexy. You know what I'm saying? You never know. You gotta eat, you gotta eat like, you gotta be straight vegetarian. Hershey you know? Highway. <laughs> I hope you didn't shit on nobody, Tyson, man. You look like a shitter, too. Man. I'm not I don't a shitter, know, dude. You, you, you look like a shitter right now, man. No. Your eyes are like, uh, you know what I'm saying? I don't know, man. You know he has mean? a fascination with shit. <laughs> <laughs> we the shit right now. We the shit. I'm on fucking hot boxing, man. I feel like the shit right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, hot boxing has that effect on people. Yeah, it's like bugged out right now. Like, <laughs> what was it like the first time you met uh, 50 in the G-Unit crew? Oh, yeah, this was scared? Funny. Yeah, I was scared out of my mind, you know. Because he, <laughs> he, he remember, Ty, he got, you know, he got shot. So yeah, yeah. Um, my cousin at that time, Sean Money, was like the manager or whatever. So uh, 50 was like, yo, man, I'm, we, we're about to go back out, but I'm not hiring a DJ. Like, I want somebody that's like a blood relative to be like the DJ. I don't care. Like, they're not looking for no scratching guy. Like, there's no like, you know, like some kind of like audition. Like, whoever it is got to be related. So I just got a phone call one day from my cousin. He's like, yo, I don't know what you're doing. I know you, you living with your girl and all that, but yo, you're, you're the DJ. Like, you have no choice. I was like, what? What are you talking about? I need you to go to my house and meet 50 Cent. So I was like, what? Then he just like shoot him. Because you know, when he got shot, the bullet went in his mouth and took out his teeth. And he got shot in his mouth, I think his hands and like multiple times. So I thought maybe I was going to see like some walking dead type motherfucker. Like, so I was like, you know, I was, I was ready to have my face down. You know what I'm saying? Like, so just in case he looks terrible. So when I got there, and I just couldn't believe it. Like, he just had like a little dimple where they shot him in his face. Every, it's, I think his mouth was like sewn shut. Like, you know, because I guess they did all the metal work and stuff. But he talked normal. And I was like, just like bugged out. He said, I'm going to ask you three questions. If you want to get hired today, I'm going to ask you three questions. He said, yo, all right. I was like, go ahead, man. Go ahead, man. Knock it out. So he said, yo, if, if a guy comes at me, like, with a shotgun or a Uzi, what are you gonna do? So I was like, shit, man, I don't know you, nigga. I'm out of here, yo. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is a true story, by the way. So he starts laughing and he's like, yo, I'm not even gonna ask you the other two questions, but now that I know you pussy, I know how to maneuver, like, when niggas is coming after me. That's how I got hired. He was like, all right, you hired? Get this nigga a vest. They gave me a vest right then and there. I got like a white vest. 
Like this is like historically like when Your you see. Life is online. Huh? Yeah, I remember seeing the G. Every time the G Unit crew would come out, they'd all be they'd all be vested up. Yeah, that's why I, I never. Bulletproof vest. Every stage that Fifty would go on. Yeah, all you guys. I remember all you guys were up. Yeah, it's like thirty on motherfuckers on stage with yeah. vests. And, and and the thing that's bugged out for me is I'm like the only one that like was not gangster in the crew. Like I went to like school and you know I'd be hanging with like. Spanish and white kids. I, I was never like into like the gangster shit. You know what I'm saying? Like street life. But I literally was thrown in it, and I'm with like three gangsters: Tony Ayo, Lloyd Banks, Fifty Cent. And then I had to like absorb that whole street life in like two months. Anybody ever shot at you? Yeah, we've been shot at. Like, I, I've, but it's like the Matrix because you become desensitized with violence. Like I used to DJ for Capone Noriega, CNN, so Nori, like Mr. Drink Champs himself. So I went through a million shootouts with them. Mob D was on tour with us. Red Man, like people were shooting everywhere. There was a port. There was a show where somebody locked the door and started shooting shotguns like everywhere. I stood still because I feel like if you see the guys like aiming, why run? Usually people will get shot. It's the ones that's running around hiding or so. But it, it felt like everything was in slow mo. So when I transferred into like the Fifty Cent shit, like the G Unit shit, like seeing shootouts and. Like people getting beat up and stuff. It was like it was like regular day at work. Huh? You see get beat up. I seen rappers get beat up. I think one time fucking uh I don't know if I forgot I forgot what word it was. I see fucking niggas is flying in midair. I, I don't know, can I shout out who was got smacked? Is that snitching? I don't know. Like it's kinda like <laughs> fucked up. Good to say people's name when you got told it looking at you. <laughs> Him, Who was it that got smacked? Ups. One of them Onyx dudes. I think I forgot. I, forgot. I think oh, it was like Fredro. We just Star. had a drop with uh, Fredro and the boys. So what happened to Fredro? I don't know. I think he was like joking, but Fifty is very responsive. And then uh, I don't know. I don't know what the fuck. I, all I saw is him flying in midair. That's all I saw. Like shit. Fifty be fucking people up like that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yo, man. He's a very unique individual, man. Like he could he could do all kinds of shit. And still be with the mayor, still hang with the president of the United States, yeah. still be with like Meryl Streep, and he's—I mean, he's just—he's definitely one of a kind, man. You know Did you saying? know at the time meeting him that you guys were gonna be the G Unit was gonna become, you know, of its time the biggest uh, hip hop crew? No, or... because uh, I was bootlegging shit. I was already making money. I was making like forty Gs a month bootlegging. I told you, I was Mixed robbing tapes. every rapper, so. That's big business. So we would like run around, collect cash from Africans and Chinese bootleggers. And, and then one day, um, I stole the list from Sony. Damn, Mike. It's beautiful, brother. The Sony store list. And on that list was Tower Records. And I just happened to just like, I, so you can imagine like, you, it's like you're selling drugs, but you don't know, there's no rules, there's no... I don't know what the fuck happened. I just emailed them as if I was a label, and then they came back. We want twenty eight thousand copies, but Tower Records don't know that this is a bootleg. They think it's, there's no red tape, there's no illegal shit like how they cease and desist everything now. None of that was out there. So imagine you get a fucking invoice order for twenty eight thousand CDs, and they pay you at the end of the month. And the CDs was like six, so it, they kept they treated it like a real album six ninety nine times twenty five. Well, I guess you're a real sophisticated criminal. <laughs> <laughs> Working the system, yo, bro. I was like, yo, this is a joke. But when I did, when I messed with like Fifty and everything, he changed the game. I didn't have to steal artist songs no more. He he gave me the idea when we when I first met him, we did the mixtape Fifty Cent's The Future. That was done in one night. Every I met him, got hired, DJ, and then we did the mixtape. All in one night. And then he's telling me, yo, go tell your girl you're never going to see her again because we're going on a 300 city tour. Mad hood shit, shooting, killing. <laughs> Be prepared. Like, you may not have, you may lose your life. But doing all that shit, passing every hood and 50 niggas on one tour bus. Can you imagine, like, you go on a tour bus, Mike, and there's 50 guys on the bus. And you need to hurry up and get on to find a place to, like, sleep because there's too much people on the bus. It's, it's just illegal. Like, even 50 would sleep on the floor. That's how humble he was. If he was late, he would sleep on the floor. But we had shooters. We had all kinds of people with us. The day we woke up and figured out that we made it is when we got booked in Africa, and we had to do South Africa for the first time. So it was our first time in Africa. But when we, when we saw we're in front of Nelson Mandela, that's when he told me, yo, I fucking made it, yo. I'm in front of fucking Nelson Mandela. Like, I, And I never heard 50 Cent tell me. He's been in front of, like, 
all kinds of people. We did like concerts. We opened up for Eminem. We did like a lot of amazing shit. But I think our first time going to Africa and we're in front of Nelson Mandela, that's when he was like, okay, I made it, yo. And on some like, like weird historical moment, like the way he said it, it was like, oh shit. And then when you see Nelson Mandela come in, you're like, we just see this guy in the fucking books. Like, yo, Tyson, I know you, you met Nelson Mandela before, right? So imagine like, and you met like a lot of legends, man. Like to us little people, like I read about him in the books and you know, they give us that fake narrative about Africa, poor people, everybody's eating dirt and shit. Everybody's like Ethiopian, whatever, all that fake shit back in the days. But when you see and you go there, you see like billionaire fucking Africans, like you see like a whole different world that they don't teach in America. But then you see Nelson Mandela walk in the room and you're like, I was, in, I was in an attic, yo, putting tapes together. I was, like, mixing blends for my uncle. I didn't think that one day, not to mention that I would be with 50, but the fact that I'm in front of Nelson Mandela, who's, like, in the history books, apartheid, you read about the shit, and you're in front of the guy. It's the same shit as, you know, you meet, like, fucking Farrakhan. I mean, yeah, imagine you meet him. Huh? Um, when he was in prison, he asked me for my gloves. Really? <sighs> He was, the funny thing about Nelson Mandela is like every time he spoke, I think he was kind of like deaf in one ear. Yeah. So it's like, we'll be like, yo, what's cracking the night? We just fucking with him. Like, yo, where we going later? Like, we go to the club. He was like, what the fuck? And we're like, yo, yo, all of us, all you see is with the head, like, because he's deaf. It's like when you wear headphones and you don't know that you're talking loud. So imagine when you think you're deaf. Every time he would say something, he'd be like, fuck! And it'd be like, everybody's head come off. Like, he'd be like, yo. Oh. <laughs> Mandela, man. <laughs> and he was cursing too, which was fucking crazy, yo. Uh, Fuck! Like, <laughs> <laughs> you with, like, did with you, Durant, the, you, you, you met the, the non deaf Mandela, right? Like, yeah, he was a deaf yeah, like that. He was cool. He okay, was all right. Cool. I, I had to think with one ear, you know what I mean? Like, oh, what the fuck happened? But, yo, my life is amazing. I've DJ with, I've DJ for Gaddafi. I met, like, terrorists. I've fucking hung out with legends, uh, Prince Albert. Uh, uh, what is it? Prime Minister Blair. I can say wanker. I didn't even know what a wanker was until I didn't know it was a dick. Did you know that? That wanker is a dick? A wanker. Yeah. yeah, I didn't know it was like a, a penis. I didn't know that. <laughs> Don't get cheeky with me. Don't get, Don't yeah, yeah, that's some weird shit. Yeah, that's, that's some Don't fucking, uh, me, yeah, that's, right? some, that's some South London shit right there. How do you know that? I've been in London, for, I've been in England for a long time. Is there anywhere you ever been, Tyson? At, hmm. Name a place. Uh, like Antarctica. I've never been to Antarctica. No. I've been to Moscow. I've been to Ch uh, Chechnya. I've never been there. Uh, You've been to Kazakhstan? Yeah. Wow. Well, I've been there before. That's crazy. I gave him like the wildest, random, most likely place nobody would be, and he was there. It's crazy. And I was there. We're going to have to plan an Antarctica trip. Yeah, we got to go to Antarctica. It's, like, it's 80 racks. <laughs> I've been, for a suit I've and been in Algeria. You've been in Algeria. Yeah, Algeria. They paid mad money there. They were paying like cash to the host a party. Like, you know what I'm saying? This is what he was doing. This is how I learned from him. He was getting paid just to like walk up yeah. and there'd be hundreds of thousands of people outside. Like, and I witnessed it for like you I witnessed it with my eyes. You guys been to China yet? Yeah, I DJed all over China. I was out there with Yao Ming. That's so awesome. Yeah, I've been to China. Where else? I did uh I did all of Australia. But matter of fact, I did almost everywhere on the globe. Only like some countries in Africa, but basically almost everywhere. And I didn't do Antarctica, obviously, but I almost did with some billionaire guy. But it's like 80 Gs to go, and then you might die because it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's an icebreaker. It's a ship, so you it may tip over. You may drown. It's like too much shit. Just to, just, Polar bear might get your ass. Yeah, the penguin might. You know, they be pecking niggas out there. You got to like watch the penguins, man. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely, man. <laughs> I'm staying yeah, away. Yeah. I, I stay away from there. I'm, yeah, I'm there in LA, man. Yeah, the yeah, penguins are yeah, yeah, LA. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Nervous, man. I say the <laughs> word. Yo. What's, what's, your, what's your dream, man? man? What's your dream? What's the dream for you? I fucking did so many dreams. <laughs> I did the sexual dreams something. already. Yeah, no, uh, but you have to have something that. Um, you know what? This is. I don't know if it's corny, but you know, linking up with Obama would be like one of my final cool things. I never yeah. really, like met him. That'd be awesome. Yeah, and then, but I don't want to meet him like cordially like the corny way everybody meet him. I want him like he's in my DJ booth, we turn up, bitches is everywhere, like and I, I don't, don't believe that's gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's a possibility. But I just, I just, I it is possible, I right? Don't visualize that. I mean, that, yo, that's like my ultimate dream. So you know, 
the way I've lived life, everything you put in the air happens. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, like you didn't. I'm, I've interviewed you like ten years ago, and you you dream a lot of shit. It came out. You did a cartoon. You did that. You're in fucking with all my Asian homies. You doing like movies in fucking China. Like you did. This, I mean, you fuck with Jet Li. You fuck with. Man, you're in fucking It Man, one of my favorite all time classics. And you're fucking seeing. I was watching that shit on a flight the other day from yeah. Dubai. Oh god. You like. <laughs> you punch the glass. Did you, did you fuck your head up, man? Nah. You like. <laughs> Saw that shit? No. That shit is hard. Let's see what what was let's that? Like, let's get the clip up. It was like <laughs> man three, I think. Look at that. Oh. Fucking him up. Look. Yo, <laughs> yo, Mike Tyson is not a fucking game, dogs. Look. You guys see the part where he punches the glass. Look at that. Bro, <laughs> like, yo, I love that scene, dog. Yo, Mike Tyson, God, man. Right. Fucking action hero. When am I gonna see you in fucking like, I don't know, Star Wars or some shit, man? No, that's no fucking Bollywood movie. You doing a Bollywood movie right yeah, now? There's a couple of them. What? Like those Indian fighters, they be like, yeah, really cool. <laughs> they be mad, juiced up too. Them Indian niggas be they're fucking really... like, they be look like they're doing steroids out there, man. They do, because they're really tiny guys. <laughs> Pop up with HGH. And then they be putting bad effects in their punch like Americans, you know, kind of meat and shit. Yeah. Do you any testing? Maybe there's no testing in India. I'm not sure. I don't think there's any testing at all. It's like a billion yeah, fucking right. motherfuckers there, True. but they diesel, right? They're overly big. Like, yeah, it just doesn't look normal. And they got like the old school effects in their movies. Like if they punch you, you know when you punch somebody, it's like Psh, they be like, oh, psh, psh, psh. <laughs> like I'm like, yo, what the fuck? Is, what am I watching right now? Like you know, but it's Bollywood, man. Some weird ass shit. Out there. <laughs> they give they giving away a lot of money. Hell yeah. <laughs> They paid Snoop, I think, like five million to do a music video. Yeah, and they yeah. shot it in they shot it here in in, in in Hollywood. It's a Bollywood video Good for Snoop. Man, shit, that's great. Is it crazy how um, all the money that you're making now is crazy? Like, imagine you had this access like back then. I'm not making. I don't have no money. I don't have a penny to my name. Yeah, whatever, man. But this is yeah, wait, fifty this cent now. This is fifty cent. <laughs> that's crazy. That's like I have a penny to my name. <laughs> <laughs> Only the biggest cannabis brand by uh, Geographic. Yeah, brand, exactly. You know? like, well, whatever, <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. So let me ask both of you guys a question. Yes, time please, being man. time being one of the most valuable assets to me, um, what, what do you do with your available free time, if you have any free time outside of work? And, um, I mean, where, where do you put your focus? I don't even have no time. I'd be working with family. Like I mean, if there's, yeah, I hang with my kids um, a lot now. Um, because it's cool, like, you know, when you're young, kids don't want to hang with, you know, I didn't want to hang with my dad. He was too serious, like, piece of shit, you know what I mean? Like, was, you know, I hated him. He didn't want to buy me clothes. <laughs> it was the worst. It's like being, you know, Haitian parents don't care. All they care about is feeding you, paying for yeah, your school. I, that's I, the world yeah, I come from, too. Yeah, you got to buy, you got to eat, eat, you know, but I pay for your school. That's it. I'm not giving you, like, Adidas or Nike. So I don't even, like, and they be like, oh, Adidas, like, you know, Haitians don't even know what that means. <laughs> So imagine I said I want two hundred dollars pair of sneakers. You like get the fuck out of here, nigga. Go eat that fucking chicken I got you, yo. Go so, get yourself, definitely. You know, but it, it's just like I try to hang with my. I had kids to have more. the clothes. Though. I had to have the clothes. Yeah, have, have, yeah. You have Versace, yeah, and then you have fucking Dapper Dan hookups and shit. I have all that. I had a Haitian shirt. I had a sneaker that had, that said number one, and the other one said number two. And it was made in like. Well, look Dominican at you now with, j- with the Louis Vuitton. Things yeah. have changed yeah, drastically. Things have changed. No, yeah, I'm chilling, man. <laughs> drastically yeah, changed. Got this from Dubai, like you know. It's, 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 I, I'm an idiot for paying fifteen hundred for it. I don't know. No, like, you're not an idiot. I'm a fucking idiot, yo. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Value. Um... <coughs> you're able. Did you pay fifteen hundred dollars? Nah, I mean, hundred dollars. <laughs> hundred fifty dollars. See, white people are smart, man. Why we gotta be stupid ass niggas all the time, man? Why I gotta spend this kind of money, man? You know why? What makes you happy if you enjoy it? No, but you have to. And think. you're able. No, why? No, why everybody um, buy Don Perignon and most people drive uh-huh. Rolls Royces because I don't care how much money you got. You can't buy a better car. There's no price on it. I don't care how much money yeah. you got. You can't buy a better. Um, Champagne bottle. You just can't do it. I don't care if you got zillions or you got four or five hundred bucks. You can't buy a better bottle, you can't buy a better car. Okay. I, don't care, I don't care if you're trillionaire, you can't buy a better car. You can have the same experience yes. with, yeah, if you, exactly. whether you got 2,500 bucks in your wallet or, or 
A billion bucks. Yeah, exactly. But my father was cheap anyway. I'm cheap ass nigga, man. Nah, he was. No big difference. Like, what does that mean? Like, people not cheap back then. Back then, it, money man. was hard to come by. Yeah, I mean, back then. I would then, call it yeah. smart, not cheap. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he did. He bought, you know, bought the crib, saved the money, put us in school. I'm not complaining, but now it's like, you know, kids get traumatized when you go to school and other oh. kids got shit and you ain't got shit. And then I had pimples, so I wasn't getting no pussy. I lost my shit at 19. Niggas is laughing at me now. Like, I told some kids now, they're like, ah, what? Niggas losing that shit. I, I think I interviewed an L.A. Chopper. They say he lost it at nine. I was like... Did you say 19? Yeah. Shit. So that's why he has some perv <laughs> tendencies. See what I'm saying? I'm not... Yo, Mike, you see what, what I'm saying? Know? Like, niggas look at me like I'm fucking... I don't know, like I'm a loser or something, man. Like, I lost it at 19. But, you know, in, in those days, bitches was... First of all, women did not look like women. Like, the way they look like now. Women have flat chests, no bodies, whack clothes. We weren't looking at them like... People are buying that. stuff yeah. now. Look, um, yeah, they have it's to like... Look. The, the, whatever they bring, right, the women are buying not, stuff now in the nineties yeah. and the two thousands and, 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 and to enhance themselves. Sex was like a lie. Like I'd be like, "You yeah, fucked her," but you lying on your dick. Like yeah. I did that like crazy times when I was young. That was like, cool, huh? Yeah, you know, I, you hump on you say, "Yo, I got a, I had a sex with her before." Yes, I'm yeah, good. Like it was, it, was, <laughs> it was really bad for me because you know when you have pimples. You definitely not getting no pussy. And these niggas call me the Haitian pizza. Nah, man. that's not true. <laughs> oh, shit. My shit was fucked up. Like, it, it was like, it was so bad, man. Yo, Your man. confidence gets you the pussy. Yeah, yeah. Nah, Pimples, yeah, man. No Pimples way. is dead in a relationship, man. Listen, I'm, I, know, <laughs> I know some guys that, I know some guys had the most beautiful women in the world and they had bad speech impediment. For real? Yeah. How the fuck were they talking? I don't know, but she understood. Really? Confidence. He said it. Nah, they ain't nothing like a pimple with shit coming out of no, it listen, and all that, like... That's shower shit. and all that. Yeah, it's like, look, she just ate her fucking vomit. She vomited and ate it, like... Somebody somebody, <laughs> somebody can deal with it. Nah. So well, it, I, well, I, it didn't work for me. Like, so I had to wait till 19 to get pussy. I finally fucked, like, my neighbor's daughter, and then I got her pregnant the first time because I didn't know you had to pull up. I honestly thought that, you know, it's random, they get pregnant random. Man. This is a country ass station, nigga, huh? Yeah, you didn't come from the country. You from America, man. It, it felt good. Like, she sat on me. She was her first time, too. So we both was like, didn't know what was going on. I was like, I just like let loose. This conversation I didn't know you had started. To, like, Whoa! Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't know that. Like, so this started by me asking what you guys do with your free time. I mean, yo, believe it or not, I love looking at art. Like, I'm, I've been hanging at our Basel a little bit. I yeah. hang a lot of famous painters and stuff. I'd rather, like, I don't know. I like creative stuff. I don't want to hear music anymore because I've been in hip-hop and EDM, trap, okay, okay. country, every genre. I've, can you imagine, like, you you hear somebody talk about boxing all the time, Mike? Oh, you yeah, don't want to yeah. hear that shit. Like, you're tired of that shit. That's when they, don't talk, when they talk about what they don't know. Yeah, like, I don't want to hear that shit. So it's like, so for me, I'd rather have, like, just dead quiet. I treat it like one plus one equals two. If I got a DJ festival, I play what the kids want to hear, I kill it, and I leave. But I'm not going to be, I can't constantly hear all that shit. Like, to me, I made hip-hop a job, and then I separate it, and then I do, like, all this amazing stuff, like... You know, I'll go overseas, I'll be on an elephant. Like, I just None of my shit's a job. Everything is fun. Like yeah, a you got to make it like that, though. That's a lot of competition. Yeah. No, but the fun is that. the job. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is a fun job. That I made it like that. You know what I'm saying? And that's one of the reasons I can't have relationships because you know what I do? constantly doing some cool ass shit. You know, I like saying I'm the best. I love hearing that word. I'm the best. Yeah, I learned that from you. You know, so when I'm having my weed, I say, I'm the best. Bro, you and you mean, both, you both have achieved that. I mean, yeah. in your categories, you you are the best. I mean, I still didn't have Obama yeah, in, in the DJ booth with horse yet. So I achieved <laughs> shit, motherfucker. Not I forgot yet. Lord Not yet. Not yeah, yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not but basically, yet. peace and quiet. I love like dead time. I like yeah. when it's like I work out like 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 a schedule every fucking week. That's why I still look the way I look. Cause I I've learned by seeing like DJs be fat. Disgusting. Mm. They're like fat piece of shits out there. So I didn't want to be the fat like piece who? of shit DJ. Like who? I mean, you know them. I know them. Can know we Google the fat? Just Google fat piece of right, shit DJ. Fat piece of shit DJ. That way I don't have to snitch. And it'll be on, it'll be on Google. Yeah. Fat piece of shit DJ. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put fat DJ. Bro, what was that bitch. transition like going from being a hip hop DJ into you're moving into EDC. Yeah, right? so crazy. EDM, fat right? piece of shit DJ. Yo, man. You do a lot of EDM stuff now. Yeah, too, I do right? like a lot of yeah. yeah. Like he knows Steve Aoki. Like he knows a yeah, couple. Yeah, I know he's in Vegas. Yeah. 
I've seen them at some of them. We be like mm-hmm. turning up together. You know the fact that we went, me and my went to EDC this year. What? Together, yeah. You went to EDC, my yeah, cousin? Yeah, nigga. So you were like, yeah. I know, I'm not that to part. the extent, but I went. <laughs> <laughs> Now, a, a lot of transitions is like just them being G Unit fans. Like yeah, a lot of like yeah. Calvin Harris. I remember Calvin Harris used to like open for, yeah, like like you know chain smokers used to open for me. They used to get like two hundred oh, bucks. Not even making like a Clean. million a show. Yeah, yeah, like you know, it's like they all like Look all that the joke. Call it. Yo, 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 yo. What the fuck, man? <laughs> so maybe yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's yeah, the song. I don't want to be that guy. Oh, Khalid, Khalid, DJ Khalid, the fat DJ, he told me about it. <laughs> DJ <laughs> Khaled. He came up, right? I mean, shit. Who, who don't want to be Khaled up. right now? Every DJ wants to be Khaled. Shit. For sure. That motherfucker is an Illuminati, man. Like, he's, he's there. I want to be in there. You know what I mean? Absolutely. I don't want to be in no group that's <laughs> better than somebody else. <laughs> Nah, I, I, I got into the game from like, you know, I've been DJing for like 30, 40 years. So I, I grew up with almost everybody, you know, even the classic guys. But Steve Aoki and, um, uh, what is it, like Carnage, a couple of cats. Yeah. Like they, I've, but that was more recent, the transition from, again, hip hop to well, I, EDM. I, I, I did it I did it because um, I wanted to de- tour all over Europe. So Europe, EDM was the biggest shit, like Saint Tropez. You go to like all these like, you know, M- Monaco, shit like that. You gotta know how to DJ EDM, so I I had to like it took me years gin to get out the G unit box. Gin and juice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the G unit box. I wanted yeah. to like be known more than just like I'm coming in to DJ hip hop, you know. So then it took me years to get out of it, but the the EDM DJs made it easy for me. They opened the doors because they were fans of G unit. Yep. So I could have easy access. It's like Mike could go anywhere right now. Mike could, Mike could go to any situation. And he's in there, and I'm I'm like ninety eight percent. Because every, I grew up with everyone. Like, there's not nobody that don't know who I am. Like, and I, and I know all of them. So, and then there's a history behind everybody. Yep. And, you know, a lot of it is fucked up, too. So, it's kind of, like, crazy out there, man. Did you know Black Jeff? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Damn, Mike is going in, man. What? That's crazy. <laughs> when you were in the hood, like, in, in Harlem, you knew all those guys, huh? <laughs> Mike is a real gangster, dog. No, I'm not. I mean, yeah, whatever, man. I'm just a very popular guy. <laughs> <laughs> I go back to my hood. That's why I always go back and see my friends. I don't stay away from them long. How, how old was Dapper Dan when you were with him? Because he, how old is he now? Like 120? I was 21. Huh? I was 21 when I got in the fight with Mitch Green there. And he, and he oh, while in his shop, right? Mm-hmm. Oh my God, man. So, I beat that nigga ass. What? Oh, I put, oh, nigga, I crushed the side of his face. What did that do? He didn't I was okay. It was like four in the morning. I was going to pick up my clothes. I was high and shit. <laughs> oh, there. There you go. Holy shit. Oh, man, Dap, look at that hoe. That's crazy. How old was he? He's like 100 now. Look how young my face is. I'm a little kid. He looks like a doll. How old are you there, Mike? Mike, what would you be there? 21. Look at Mike, yo. He's still, oh, he had Gucci back then. Gucci gave him the rights to make it now. See that shit? This is who you, you, you were with the underworld like way before. Like these rappers and hip hop guys, you know, like wow. I could imagine like the story. I've seen you like in a lot, you see these kind of photos? You see like when they pose like that? Like all the, all the trappers or whatever they get together? I've seen you in like some of them, like you're like, like he's even, young Mike Tyson is like in the club, like yeah, that's what it was back then, man. You went to like almost every club. Definitely Bentley's, all the club. You were in Bentley's, Bentley. Name a club in New York, back uh, then. Uh, Nell's. Yes. Uh, Keep Underground. Living. I've been in all that's um, that's by the tunnel. Yeah, tunnel. Oh, forget it. <laughs> <laughs> See what I'm saying, man? This guy's been in every fucking club, man. Uh, you're doing something new. You're doing uh, Snoop's new album or something, right? Or you just uh, did a new track, I think, with Snoop. I leak like a song every day from Snoop Dogg. Okay, I just okay. leaked the, the baby song. I leaked uh, Nas, and I leaked uh, another track with the game. And it's and, you know he's he's you know he's on the Death Row now. Can you Ooh. believe it? Death Row's back. Death Row Records. Who owns it now? I don't know. You should you should look into that, Mike. We can look into it right here. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> that screen gives you all the answers. Yeah, Mike. All right, if you go Who down. Who owns Death Row Records? If you go down. Yeah, that, that's all the stuff okay, I think. Okay, can we go there? Who owns it? <laughs> that's, that's my Instagram. Because I, I, I promote Death Row now. Why don't you buy that shit, Mike? 600, what, 600,000? Six hundred million, nigga. Oh, so let's get it. Let's get it, Mike. Six hundred million. What if Death Row ain't worth six hundred million? <laughs> Mike is crazy. Uh, <laughs> it's not worth. Oh, it. keep uh, keep going, keep going. Oh, they go. Oh, they go. Bob Saget, if y'all want to check him out, he was in my last video. Didn't he just die? Yeah, he's yeah. He died like two weeks after. Wow. Look. Oh, the new bacon. Oh, you really have them big time white people in your video. Yeah. <laughs> Do you believe this shit? No. But anything's possible. Is that slushy? Slushy? Yeah, slushy. You look at my wig. I don't know what was going get on. Get busy, baby. Get busy, DJ. Who uh, is yeah, you go down to, I think, one of the shows you could check. Uh, oh, Carolina. South DJ Carolina. DJ, who can? Uh, this, this show's hard, DJ. I guess. Who can? Oh, shit. Who's that? From country nigga. Okay. Yeah. Still play old school hip hop. Tell us more about your life, nigga. Tell us about your kids and your wife. There's a bunch of million of people watching you all over the planet. Tell them what you need, what they need to know about you. All they need to know. How to get in contact yeah, with you. Yeah, just, you know, follow me at DJ Who Kid. Cooney's my manager. Get to know what you're into. Yeah, um, I still run radio. Um, Six million tune in every weekend on Eminem's channel. Um, and I still do marketing. I, every artist you see out there that's turning up, making money with a million chains, I help them with their music. So just holla at me and uh, my stream. My stream is coming out soon. Houdini, maybe Houdini? I could, maybe I could get y'all to help. Me listen, with that. I would yep. help you with the. Oh, yep. you, listen. Come under Tyson two point oh, buddy. Let's I'll come go. under Tyson and do You that. have to because everybody in the whole world is going to be there because they're going to be obliviated by us. Oh shit! I wanted to when you smoke it's like magic, Houdini. Like it will be. Trust me, get on the bandwagon now. Right now. You got me gyrating to a fucking football. Listen. Team. Either you come with us or we annihilate you. <laughs> Says it how it is. Well, Adam's my partner in Tyson 2.0. And soon we're going to start running the show. Mm. We're in 18 states. Matter of fact, let me um, introduce you to Adam Wilkes. Please explain to the people what we're doing and what we've done already. Tyson 2.0. Um, we've launched iconic uh, Mike Tyson and, and Top Shelf Flower across uh, 18 states. Uh, nobody's ever done it, so again, excited to be making history with Mike Tyson, with Tyson 2.0. Check us out. We're across the country. I'm leaving with this shit. Check us out on the next set of Hot Boxes. I'm Mike Tyson, and who okay. cares?